and good second day of the ninth month, 2010 years past the beginning of the common era to ya. I'm Molly and this is Rocket Boom. Sometimes I just want to copy someone else's status word for word and see if they notice. And I am not alone. Viewer Ben Ashman writes, Hey, we'd like to see the killer Humboldt squid integrated into daily news soon. They've been running swimming amok in the waters of California recently, depleting fish stock. Can you imagine? Giant killer squids with voracious appetites rivaling crocodiles, hunting for humans in large packs. Diablos rojos as they are sometimes called. Native to areas of the Pacific coast of Mexico and Chile, especially at depths with particularly low oxygen levels and not a lot of people, reports indicate that yes indeed, they've been popping up off the coast of Alaska, Oregon, even California A. Oceanographers suggest the depleting oxygen levels along the Pacific shoreline could be the cause for the invasion. Since Humboldt squid prefer depths of around 180 meters, beachgoers need not fear. Most need not fear. Too much. But if you're planning on scuba diving into the 180 meter range, pack yourself a nice chainmail sweater. Thanks also to the guy who just wanted to see me read the dictionary. See the story links below for the update. After two and a half years of trekking through the jungles of Brazil, Peru and Colombia, 34 year old Ed Stafford from Leicestershire, England has become the first person in recorded history to walk the entire length of the Amazon River, and then some. In an effort to raise awareness of the threats facing the Amazon rainforest, Stafford walked over 9,500 kilometers, was imprisoned on murder charges, and released innocent. He was attacked by Ashninka Indians, stung by bugs thousands of times, ridden with skin diseases, and made videos of the experience, which are available to watch on his website, walkingtheamazon.com. Pass it on. Following up with last week's report on Brazil's right to ridicule protests, Brazil's Supreme Court Vice President and Workers' Party member Carlos Ayres Brito has repealed the law that prohibited any audio or video from being used to degrade or ridicule political candidates. The long and the short of it goes like this. Brazil's President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva of the Workers' Party also chairs the Supreme Electoral Tribunal, which decides the country's voting laws. In 2005, 13 Workers' Party candidates were accused of buying votes, although no charges were brought, and President Lula has maintained a very popular 79% approval rating. Currently leading in public opinion polls is Dilma Rousseff, the Workers' Party candidate whom Lula has endorsed. Then, when all candidates showed support for the law's repeal, Lula's vice president, also a Workers' Party member, ultimately approved. So we know that the Workers' Party has the majority and would benefit from shielding their candidate from accusations of corruption, should such accusations come into play. While it's great news that Brazilian comedians are free to crack wise at the expense of all the candidates again, the question remains, how and why was such a dumb law passed in the first place? The highest voted answer in the comments gets a set of Rocket Boom dog tags. In Apple, new iPods with FaceTime phone calls without a contract, a brand new social network for sharing music and not syncing with Facebook, and a new Apple TV for $99 with 99 cents streaming TV shows from ABC and Fox. It's not enough content for most people to cancel their TV cable subscriptions, but if other content networks follow suit, it could be great. And with an iPad, users can surf the web on the iPad and just touch once to expand the playback to their TV. In sports, who can solve the Rubik's Cube while free-falling the fastest? German YouTuber Kleiner Ludwig uploaded this video of himself solving it in 31.5 seconds. Roller coaster chess trumped. In greenhouse gases, first discovered in 1968, then rediscovered in 2006, dry water is a superabsorbent powder consisting of micro droplets of H2O encapsulated in silica, which forms an outer layer, preventing the 95% water, 5% powdery sand mixture from turning to a liquid or gas. At the 240th National Meeting of the American Chemical Society last month, scientists reported dry water could be used to absorb and store and thus reduce carbon dioxide, methane, and a number of other harmful greenhouse gases that are dooming the environment. At one point or another, computers, boneless ribs, and solar-powered flashlights would have all seemed ridiculous too. And yet, here we are.